Hey guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life and welcome to episode two of my Prisoner Cell Block H series review. Now, before we get started, if you are a huge fan of Wentworth or Prisoner or Bad Girls or if you're pretty much obsessed with women's prison dramas in general, just like me, then hit that subscribe button right now. Okay, so Prisoner episode two, which I have titled Be Prepared. Okay, so at the end of last episode, so B had got into Lynn Warner's cell in the middle of the night with the help of Officer Yates. And B grabs Lynn and threatens her, telling her that if she screams, she will punch her in the face. Now, B then tells Lynn to tell the governor tomorrow that the burn on her hand was an accident. Otherwise, B will lose her parole and be stuck in prison and will pretty much then make life hell for Lynn if she, you know, is forced to stay there. I think at this stage, Lynn is slowly starting to see how things are working working in prison. And the following day, Lynn does tell the authorities that it was an accident and that she got it wrong, which means that B is going to be getting out. But before we get to that part, Vera, she ends up going to solitary to tell Frankie that it's now looking like the B will be getting paroled today. And Frankie has a big juicy smile on her face because Frankie tells Vera that she will be taken over as top dog the minute B leaves the prison. So now that B has been granted her parole, it's also the same day that mum is getting her parole. Now, the women and the officers, they put on a little farewell dinner party for the both of them because they're both like very long term inmates. Now, just before the farewell meal, we learned that mum's daughter Lorraine, she hasn't been to visit her for over like 12 months and Erica, she double checked with her that everything is okay and that it's still okay for mum to go and stay with daughter Lorraine. Now mum just says it's all good, they've had a new baby, life has just been very busy for them but she won't let her down. Okay so on to the farewell. So B and mum they make two very different speeches. Now B's speech is full of jokes and laughs and mum's is a lot more emotional and Marilyn she ends up giving mum a little present. It's basically like a knitted blanket and Marilyn tells mum that that every girl made a square for it and it's just absolutely beyond cute. I'm not crying. I forgot to say, B, she ends up telling Doreen and a few of the girls that Frankie is probably gonna try and take over the minute she leaves, but B says something very fishy when she says that it won't last long, so just behave yourself. Mm. Dory thinks that B has someone else lined up to take over, but B just tells them all that, you know, it'll be a big surprise. So B, she's got this big plan that she's going to spend all of her money that she's earned over the last 10 years in prison in a posh hotel. She's going to live it up on a big night out and then after that she's going to go back to her husband, Harry Smith. So B gets Marilyn to ring her boyfriend Eddie and asks him to give her a lift into town. Now there is actually this hilarious moment that makes me laugh every time I see it, but B she books a room in the Monarch Hotel, this really posh hotel, right? And when the staff member guy is showing her and Eddie around in the room, B just basically gives him a tip by saying, if you look down your nose at me once more, I'll chuck you through that bloody window. So B she ends up living it up on her first night out of the prison but come the following day she has her hair done and she then makes a phone call to an old friend called Valerie. Now Val she is an old cellmate of B and B wants to meet her because Val she is holding a secret package for B which is apparently a present for B's husband Harry. So B tells Val that after her lunch she's gonna go and book a taxi go and visit all of the places that she's missed over the last 10 years. She's then going to see where they've put her daughter Debbie which then leads me on to a really heartbreaking scene where B goes visiting to Debbie's grave and we get some like really sad flashbacks of Debbie coming to visit B and you know Debbie she was hooked on the drugs but Harry she had kicked her out after he brought home a new girlfriend and it's such a sad moment. It's quite often that this scene is played a lot in like TV shows if they're ever like talking about prisoner. B then goes and visits her husband and Harry's fancy woman opens the door. B tells this woman to go and get Harry. So when the fancy woman closes the door to go and get B's ex-husband or husband, I don't know if they're still married, but whatever, yeah, you get the drift. 
B pulls a gun out of that little parcel and hides it behind her bag. When Harry opens the door, he tells her that she is not welcome back here, and B just turns around and says, I don't want to come back. I just brought you a present. And then, bang! B shoots the gun, shoots her husband dead on the doorstep, right in front of the fancy woman who lets off a agonizing scream, by the way. <laughs> Don't ever mess with B. Smith. I absolutely love this moment. So this is how episode two ends, but I do want to go back and talk about Mum, because this episode, oh, it does break my heart. It's particularly, particularly for Mum, when her daughter Lorraine arrives and she picks her up outside of the prison. So, Mum and daughter Lorraine, they stop off for some food at Pizza Hut. And this is where we learn that daughter Lorraine doesn't want Mum to come back and live with her and the family. It's so heartbreaking. Lorraine goes on to say that the family, they've been doing really well in work and in school and she apparently couldn't bear it if any of her friends or neighbours found out that Mum is an ex-com. Shock horror. She's pretty brutal and it honestly makes my blood boil every time I see this scene. Lorraine even says that she was hoping that mum would have died in prison. <sighs> what a bitch. In the end, mum, she's had enough. Lorraine has apparently organised a room for mum, but mum just tells Lorraine to open the boot of the car, take off the suitcase and tells her to drive away. And Lorraine, she turns around and she says, look, I can't just leave you here, you're my mother. And mum then turns around and says, you have no mother, Lorraine. She died in there a few moments ago. Oh God, it's so sad. I literally just cannot cope. Now, anyone who has seen Prisoner and is a Prisoner fan will know just how much of a beautiful soul mum is. And it really sucks to see her being treated like this. Now, mum, she ends up getting a cheap and rundown hotel all alone and probably frightened to death of being on the outside after 15 years. Back in the prison and Frankie has taken over as top dog, shock horror. Nobody is able to really stand up to her, not even Karen Travis, who tries to a little bit, but it's no use. Frankie, she's too tough, and Frankie makes it very clear that she's now in charge of that prison. Frankie, like, really starts to throw her weight around, and at one point, while Lynn Warner is digging in the garden, Frankie winds her up about, you know, the baby that she apparently buried alive. Now, you know, Lynn, she proper loses it, and she even throws the shovel at Frankie, and they both end up in a muddy fight on the floor before being dragged apart. Lynn then runs back to a cell with Karen not too far behind her, and this is when Lynn tells Karen that she's not going to eat any more food, she's going on hunger strike until someone believes her story. I mean, I personally couldn't do that. I love my food way too much. I really want a Pizza Hut now. We are properly introduced to Meg's husband and son, Bill and Marty Jackson. Now, Meg and Bill, they can't quite believe how fast um, Marty is growing up, and they didn't even realize in this episode that he'd been out all night with a girlfriend. They didn't even know that he had a girlfriend. So there's clearly issues here where Marty feels that he never sees his parents due to the busy lifestyle that they have at the prison, but Meg makes a point that they will try and make some sort of an effort. So final few thoughts on episode two. Well, this episode is quite an emotional roller coaster, even by today's standards. Between mum being treated really badly by her own daughter and B going to visit Debbie's graveside with those really sad flashbacks, you do need some tissues for this one. Now I'm really finding Frankie entertaining, throwing her weight around the prison. I love stuff like that and she's causing trouble because let's face it, we all love a troublemaker. It keeps things juicy. B proves just how badass she is when she kills her husband at the end of the episode, but what does this now mean for Frankie when B comes back to Wentworth Detention Centre? Well, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Anyway guys, that's the end of my episode 2 review on Prisoner. Let me know in the comments box below, does this episode make you cry? Or does it make you just feel a little bit emotional? Surely, you know, you can tell me, you can tell me. Leave all your comments in the comments box below. Just before we go, I totally forgot to say that Lorraine, who plays Mum's daughter, is the same actress who plays Celeste in Wentworth. Now, she is the woman who lives 
is ended up squashing with a tractor. <laughs> it's going to be a few more Prino Prisoner slash Wentworth faces that have appeared in both shows, so when they pop up, I'll make sure to mention it. Right then, guys, well, thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, stay safe, and I'll see you all again very soon.